Yep, Atlanta's number in pop station is Album 790. Dirty J Nick Slots Gown Radio. DJ Cash, the fly Haitian kid, I'm in the building. You know what I'm talking about? Look, hey, uh, model money's in full effect. You know what I'm saying? Big Booty Judy's in the building. What's happening? So, where did you I get don't the... know about this model thing, though. I'm I mean, you're an entrepreneur. Model. I mean, it's, it's, the segment is called Model Money. Okay. But you are definitely a boss and been doing your thing. And you definitely have a big booty, too. Yeah, take this where you got to be. You but can be not a, model. a model. You can be. Yeah, but not a model. Yeah, definitely. You're an entrepreneur, self made millionaire. Listen, well, I can't stay self made. God help me. Okay, Jesus. Thank the Lord. Yeah, I'm just saying. That's, that's I just think that it's kind of selfish when people say that. So right. I don't. I don't claim that. So how, how how was it growing up in New Orleans? From New Orleans, yep. Louisiana. Yep, from New Orleans. Florida. Okay. How? Well, it's, um, everybody says it's pretty rough there. I don't know why they say that. I think it's it's rough everywhere at some point. I mean, look at all the stuff, all the positive things we have going on right now. We have a lot of positive stuff going on. We have a lot of entrepreneurs. We have a lot of successful people. I'm not the only one. So um, I'm glad that we able to finally shine. I mean, we we able to finally shine light on the city in a positive way, though. So, so what makes you think? Like, why do you think that people have such a like a negative thought towards New Orleans? Probably was because of the murder rate, you know, and then Katrina. But I mean, I feel like in any city, there's certain areas that certain people can't go. You know, like I'm I'm not scared to drive at night or anything. Right. And then after Katrina, when a lot of stuff was deserted, people were going in areas they shouldn't have. Not saying anything should have happened to them, but you know, it's kind of you know the rules wherever you go. Okay. So how much patience did it take for you to just develop this this hair product, hair care? Because that's that's I mean I, I feel like you know that's a big market. A lot of people try to do it, but mm-hmm. the way you did it, it's a little different. And yeah. you pop, you pop, <laughs> and then you pop big like <laughs> well, wow. One, one of my rules was going against what everybody else was doing and like i remember i even came up with an idea and somebody executed it before me and i just i shot the idea to shit i'm excuse me because i don't i don't want to copy like i'm i'm big on going against the grain and being the first to do it um so with the fact that hair loss is a thing nowadays instead of us saying oh hey you know let's talk about it in a negative way i felt like let's make fun of it like let's laugh about it together you know and your hair your uh your hairline Basically features up, I think eleven products, right? Eleven uh, we around have 14, on, now. fourteen different products. 14. It netted uh, a million, probably more. What? Uh, in profits or something like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, to to y'all. Uh, I saw my first million a few years ago. Okay, but um, my point is this: that um, I think sometimes uh, businesses like yours, owned by black women and for black women, mm-hmm. um, go unsung. But you have the Kylie Jenners that are be on, I don't know, all these magazines for doing, you know, all types of makeup and hair and all that stuff. Why do you think it is that businesses like yours, owned and operated by black women and for black women, aren't as celebrated? I feel like, honestly, nowadays we have been celebrated a mm. lot. We have been. I mean, I was, me and a friend of mine did Essence. You know, like, they, Essence called us and asked us to, asked us to speak. Um, I think Kylie Jenner per se, she she was she's trending right now because she it's like she broke a record. Right. You know, like that thing that she did is not easy to do whether you're famous or not. You know, like you have a lot of people that are famous that haven't achieved that. So, um, because I know a lot of people frowned upon the cover of Forbes when it said self made, and I just feel like I think the focus should have been on the actual fact that she her, her company about to be worth a billion dollars. Yeah. But I heard there was a, I don't remember the exact name of the young lady or the business, but um uh, African American woman. Yeah, she her business did more than Kylie's and um it didn't get nowhere near as the publicity as she, Kylie's did. It I think it happened a little bit after or maybe mm, if gotcha. it was right before and then they also were saying that it it wasn't up against it because she had investors. Now I don't know if, I don't know that to be the truth. But that's why they were saying it didn't get as much recognition. Gotcha. So, but I just feel like right now, women are on the rise. Women are very supportive of each other. Like, everybody, it's not, it's, it, to me, it's not how it used to be. I mean, I'm a person that represents women empowerment and helping each other out. And I think we're in a day and age for that. Like, you don't have as as many people being cat in. It's like we reaching out to each other, pulling each other up the ladder. That's what I feel like. That's where we are. Okay, so so being a black woman, like just to even have this business idea, was it hard for you? Do you have investors that invested in your company? No. Okay, so it's all you. I'm definitely self funded. Wow. So how the hell was that? What was what? It. Uh, I listen. I did a tour, a seven city tour earlier this year, teaching people about Instagram, social media, marketing, all the rest of it. You don't have to have a lot of money in the beginning. You have to just be smart about it. You got an iPhone. You got an idea. Use hashtags. Know the right time to post. 
you know, if you got if you got somebody in your city that's popping, do something for them for free so they can post you if you ain't got the money. You know, it's like there's so many different creative ways about doing it. Everybody think you got to be funded or you got to have all this money, and that's not true. So, so this was just all just a, a what was the whole process? Was it woke up? I'm tired of doing hair. I've been doing no, hair all my I life. I never wanted to stop. I never wanted to like they had to pull me. I I had to get pulled from behind the chair after I was making millions. Like it was because I had so many people that I had been doing, and they were used to me. They didn't want to go to nobody else. I think I got down to like five clients that didn't want to let me go, and I was going in one day a week, you know. And it, it just got listen. You got to stop because it started interfering with the online thing, and I had to fly out of town or I had to have a business meeting, and this one day was interfering. But um. For me, I I was doing hair, and I saw that there was an epidemic of hair loss. So I try to play into creating something to go along with it. Because um, a guy that I knew had a line of products, and he just kind of handed his chemist over to me, which was great, you know, because I had to go look for none. So we, we worked on it about, I don't know, 18, 19 months until I really liked it, because the first one was too thin, the other one was too thick. Um, and from there, I didn't expect it to turn into what it turned into. Right. So, but it happened. Why I, do you think, um, I read a Fortune magazine uh, article, and it said black female women are the fastest mm-hmm. uh, group of entrepreneurs in America. Why do you think that is? Uh, I think it's because because of lack of support. So, so. You have, you're very you're very persistent about getting it done because you feel like I don't care who ain't gonna help me I'm gonna get it done. And when it comes to the you know if you're a single mom, right? You know it's I gotta do it for my children. So I'm I'm I, I'm I don't feel, I feel like can't nobody tell me no, right? Because I'm gonna go do it myself. So, so I mean I'm just kind of like amazed, and the reason why I say that just because I think so many people have dreams and have aspirations in life to be better to do better, but you actually went out there and and did it. Like what was that process like? I mean what made you decide to even start your own? Hair, hair product line? Is it just because you was working in the chair and you seen products that wasn't that good? or No, I just felt like there was a need for it, and I was trying to add a little bit of revenue to what I already had. Because mm. at the time, it was like, okay, well, I can sell this for this much more. It's going to be an upsell. So if I charge somebody two fifty for a store and they charge them $15 for a spritz, it's going to be $15 more. But then once I got into the creative side of Instagram and promotion and content creation, and I saw just how much money was being made in retail, it was like, Oh, like this could be something, you know, and then I just went for it. So what what was the uh, what was your um execution as far as Instagram? Yeah, I mean cuz you I mean you I had, definitely a beautiful young lady, you know what I'm saying? So was it was was part of that something like, you know what? I'm fine. Let me see what I can do. Let me work these assets. No, no I had a, I had a grand opening for my salon. I hired Shekana to be um the host of the grand opening uh-huh. and when she did the promotion for the grand opening and I saw what it did for my followers, I said, why don't I use the same tactic and put it into the hair products? Mm. And then the first thing that I did was I hired um, comedians in the immediate area um, of New Orleans. One of them, it was a barter system. I did a hair for free. She uh, did promo for me for free. Mm. So I came up with a series called The Edge Police. And so we we got, you know, little cop uniforms from Party City. We ran around the city on real time with phones, uh, like a, a cheap cameraman, and we ran to people's house talking about their hair, and we made an Instagram series that did really good. I did like four or five seasons of that, and I just tried to come up with different creative ways because it just kept growing. Wow. So I just learned how to monetize Instagram. So, I mean, and this was just all you just like going out there and like learning it yourself. Yeah. Nobody taught you just how to do all of this stuff. I can't say that. I could say um, I have uh, like, I have friends that might know Instagram just like I might know business. So if we sit down and talk, they might tell me something about, oh, girl, did you, you know, they changed the algorithm. Did, did you see that? I'd be like, oh, listen, did you check your website? You know, they got a new app, you know, just stuff like that. Okay. Okay. So, okay. You recently, sent, recently opened a salon, uh, East New Orleans. What made you open this salon? I though? recently closed the salon. Oh, you East recently school. closed it? I, I actually gave it to my best friend who wound up growing out of it, and um, she got on with her. So I, I had a salon in New Orleans East from 2013 until January this year. Okay, so any other salons you want to open up, or are you pretty much done with that? No, I had I have a warehouse that I ship my products out of. and That's, that's all the salon you need, huh? Mm-hmm. You got chairs in the back of that thing? Because you seem like a hustler. Well, the... The revenue is different. Right. I bet. The revenue is different. There's a there's a tap. Like there's a there's I'm sorry, there's a cap when it comes to salon. So 
once I learned um, how to make money more effectively, I did it that way. The, the city seems to be, like, really re- rebuilding. Like, uh, the whole New Orleans, it seems to really be, like, getting back on his feet. The economy seems to be, like, from the outside in, from the outside looking in, it looks like. Has the city um, recognized which the, the, you know, the kind of boost or the help you've given to the economy in New Orleans? Yeah. Yeah, the city. The city's given me a proclamation. I've recently been in a meeting with the new mayor. We have a new mayor, um, and we're up to something. Um, so the city is very supportive. The city is actually in my top three financial supporters when it comes to my online sales. Wow. So it's so. it's it's real. Po- it's crazy how positive it is because you would think that it would be the opposite. Right. But it's like they stand behind. They stand behind their own. Because they feel like I'm representing the city. Right. And I know your product. You I, when you made it, you. I'm guessing that you uh, had black women in mind when you made it, but do white women use your product as well? Yes. Nice. The uh, Miracle Drops does not have uh, ethnicity or gender. Nice. So it can be used. Miracle Drops? Yes. What's this called? That's what okay. it's That's my number one product. I miracle. need a miracle. If you're not tuning in, man, uh, Miss Jessica, do parts of the builder. You know what I'm saying? We were also just discussing about every, just everything you got going on. Um, as far as like, can you give us a, like importance of teamwork? Because I definitely know you couldn't do all this by yourself. I mean, I know after a while you have to have a team. What's the importance of teamwork? As if you, far, go, if you don't have a team, you're gonna be limited. Mm-hmm. I had to learn that the whole way. I mean, um, because I I'm, I'm big on being hands on, but then you there's only so much you could do. And then there's only so effective that you can be. So once you do build a proper team, that's the higher you could go. And then the higher you go, the more people you got to add to your team. Mm. So, so team, how many people do you actually employ at this time? Do you, do you know off the top of your head? How many people do I employ total? I don't know, like 20. Yeah, about 20-something. That's a big staff. Yeah, it started off with three. Mm. Yeah. So what would you tell some of these young black women out here as far as young black girls are growing up? Um, just growing up, like, because I, I just feel like a lot of young black girls, we have a, a big problem we always talk about, like, a lot of young black women are growing up with our fathers, you know what I'm saying, with our guidance of, of men in their lives, just teach them how to love, teach them this, teach them that. What would you tell some of these young black girls as far as the struggles that you done went through to be successful, as successful as you are? I would say um, the number one thing is to pray. Uh, don't tell your friends your ideas because God gave you your vision. So even if you tell somebody an idea, they don't support it. It might not be because they don't like you or they are because they don't want you to do it. It's because they don't understand. Um, so pray. Whatever vision God puts on your life, go with it. And then uh, the blessings will overflow from there. Like a lot of people rely upon family support, friend support, and that's not where it's, half the time that's not where it's going to come from. Mm. 